the early years, life at the State Agricultural College. MSU was truly the first of its kind, it was the first institution to take advantage of the Morrill Land Grant Act passed during the Civil War and the first successful agricultural college in the United States. There had been attempts in Europe, but none had really done all that well, and all had been privately funded. MSU was the first publicly funded one. So in a lot of ways, MSU was forming its own curriculum, and it did very well at this. This is a picture of the first class of 1861. All of these students went on to become decorated officers in the Civil War, and other graduates became members of the State Board of Agriculture, the legislature, or professors at other institutions, both other land-grant universities and in the Ivy Leagues. But with all this going on, and with this very new kind of institution, what were these influential graduates like in their school years? What was it like to be a student on the campus of the State Agricultural College? Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, they woke up at 5.30 for chapel, which was like a short prayer meeting, and then they spent the rest of the day either working or in classes, depending on which division they were in. They were required to do three hours of manual labor a day, and between that and classes and studying, it left them very little time for recreation. A good example of just how much work they did do can be seen in this picture, taken in 1857 of Saints Rest, the very first dormitory on campus. And in the picture, look specifically at the ground. And you can see all the dirt and the debris and the tree stumps everywhere left over from the, the hasty building process. And then look at this picture, taken about 15 years later. Uh, you can see the amount of work that the students put in. You see the, the grass and the neat bushes and the clean pathways were all a product of the students' efforts. And the very attractive campus that they created, those three hours of manual labor they did each day. Uh, and this effort was matched in their studies as well. They put a focus on real education, not just recitation marks, or what we now call grades. And this can be seen in two essays taken from The Bubble, which was a student publication on campus in 1868. The first, Our Duty, focused on the student's duty to really learn and get everything they could from the institution rather than just get the grades. And a second, ideas and thoughts, focused on the need to create lasting ideas, not just thoughts for the moment. And this work ethic kept them very busy. Uh, Jefferson King writes in a letter home to his brother, My studies crowd me truly hard. And Granger, in his diary, writes uh, that he stayed up past 11 to finish homework for the next day, which, when you're waking up at 5.30 every morning, 11 is incredibly late. Uh, but as much as they say how busy they are, they never complain that it's too much. They never say that the professors are being unfair in how much they're assigning or that they can't do everything they've been given. They were either going to do the work and get it done or procrastinate and not. And that, that did happen, but they had a very serious attitude about this is what's required. This is what I need to do. Now, they weren't serious all the time. They were still college kids, and they did have a lot of fun, and they did have a very carefree attitude. And this can be seen looking back at the picture of Saints Rest in 1857. This time, look at the people in the picture, especially these three right in front. You can see their funny poses on the tree stumps, and this guy on the left with his hands on his hips, and so here they are, taking the very first picture of the brand new agricultural college and these three are being hooligans, right in the front. And there are even people chilling out on the roof already. And this really shows their excitement that they had so thoroughly explored their campus already and the carefree attitude that they, that they had. And this attitude is put into prose in a section taken from the bubble once again. We are students, bold and gay. We care not what outsiders say. We'll have our sport while tis today and reck not of the morrow. So that's, that's their attitude written out by the students themselves. And this also uh, often took the form of puns, pranks, and practical jokes. My favorite prank that they pulled on campus is the freezing of the bell. And this happened when they, there was a bell that would wake them up every morning. And during the winter time, they would take water and pour it on the bell in the middle of the night. 
so that it couldn't wake, it would freeze and couldn't wake them up in the morning. And then, this is a pun taken from the bubble. Why is a person about to visit a city on the Tigris like a boy putting his father into a sack? Because he is going to Baghdad. And this shows not only their affinity for cheesy jokes, but also their education and their knowledge of geography that they would understand this kind of a pun. So, now this attitude didn't always take a form that the faculty would approve of. These are three rules that we know of the students breaking on campus. The first, the use of tobacco and other narcotics is forbidden in any of the college buildings. But there's textual evidence that they, in fact, did smoke in the buildings very often, as well as this is a, a clay pipe that we found in the excavation of Saints Rest. And a second rule, they shall neither bring nor use upon the premise any spirituous or intoxicating liquors but there are records of them playing drinking games such as Snapdragon and also we found the tops of wine bottles in the excavation. And a third, card playing and other games of chance are wholly prohibited, but they definitely did play cards and their several students got sent home for this actually.